and it Now, changing the damper oil and full servicing the fork will not fix that noise on pavement, but I can personally tell you the fork rides 95% better with a lighter damper oil like RockShock 2.5 weight. This is a Suntour Doralux 38 RC2 damper. The RC2 damper can be identified by stickers and one low speed compression knob on the bottom of the fork. I'm assuming this is the same damper that's in the 36 Suntour fork. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a full teardown. Suntour will not give you instructions or parts to service this in the United States. And I felt like the Rebel Alliance stealing the plans for the Death Star to make this video. <laughs> Release all the air from the fork, flip it upside down. We got two 10 millimeter bolts holding the lower legs on. Crack those open, leave the nut on the fork. Move over to the rebound side, pull this O-ring out underneath the rebound adjuster and loosen that up. <laughs> now hammer on the nuts on the lower legs to get it loose. Flip the fork upside down. If you run into this issue of the nut being stuck, here's a little hack. Get an impact gun and run that 10 millimeter nut off of the fork. Now your fork should not have lower leg fluid in it or a significant amount, but I've been running multiple different variations of oil. So I'm doing this over the trash can to not make a mess. Now pull the foam rings out of the fork. And if you're gonna reuse them because you're a cheap home mechanic, try not to poke holes in them, but they still work fine after this. The compression cap and the air cap are held on with a 27 millimeter. Ideally you have suspension tools, but an open end wrench does the job. And if you're really crafty, you can use a crescent wrench and not damage it. Use a rag to unscrew it. This will speed things up. The air spring is held in with some wrench flats. You can use a crescent wrench on this guy and the air spring is extremely easy to remove. A very standard looking air spring inside the Suntour Duralux. It does feature a pretty big negative air chamber. So remove the top cap because you wanna clean this. Now your top cap's not gonna look like this unless you remove the piston assembly thing that's attached to it. That's it right there. Now there's no manual for this fork so I don't know what in the fuck that thing is. I think it's a piston compensator. Someone in the comments said it's a negative token. If you remove this, it will make it better for lighter riders. Now here's a pro tech tip. When I had the stock damping oil inside the fork, I removed the piston compensator thing and it was perfect. Once I changed the damper oil, I put it back in and had to add tokens. There's not much to this fork except for a lot of cleaning on the lower leg surface, but you need to pay attention to the end part of this video for a pro tech tip. Now, if your foam rings are in decent condition, you can spray them with alcohol and push the rag down onto them to clean them. This is the official instructions from RockShox, so don't call me a complete hack. These foam rings were in decent shape, so I'm reusing them. Now, since there's essentially no instructions, it's a game of guessing. During this experiment, I was running the RockShox fluid and I soaked the foam rings in RockShox lower leg fluid. Now here's some hindsight experience. The Fox 20 weight gold oil is far superior to the RockShox oil as far as keeping this fork quiet. So if you have that option, go for the 20 weight gold oil and inject small amounts into the lower leg bleed ports. For the lower leg service, basically take alcohol, spray the inside of the stanchion as good as you can. Take a bunch of paper towels, make them as tight as possible on those inner stanchions. Grab your rebound rod and ram those puppies home to clean out all that old nasty grease. Now, if you remove the dust wiper seals with a 22 millimeter wrench, it makes putting the foam rings in a lot easier and you can clean them off more thoroughly. As you can see, I'm putting the foam rings in first. It just makes life three times easier. The fit and finish of those dust wipers is really bad, so you can push them in by hand. So clean the air piston off as good as you can and take some kind of suspension grease, doesn't matter what you use, and grease that rod up, but don't put too much grease. Now everything is clean inside of the fork, so flip it upside down, stuff the air piston in, put some grease on the threads and on the inner stanchion and tighten her up to good and tight. 
So it's up to you if you put this top cap piston in. If you're a lightweight rider, leave it out. If you're a heavy guy, maybe leave it. Now this is the Wild West with no official instructions, so keep that with a grain of salt. So basically, if you put 10 cc's of lower weight oil into the lower legs, it will puke out of the seals and make a massive mess, but it will make the fork quieter. I found some video or document saying that the fork can take 10 cc's of oil, but you're supposed to drain it at that point. Basically, you're supposed to add two cc's of oil through the bleeder valves at a time and then drain it when it gets to 10. I believe this is the proper service procedure. We're just gonna put some suspension grease on the inside of the dust wipers, and I recommend putting a thick coating of grease on the bushings in the lower legs because these ones were really chewed up. Attaching the upper and the lower legs is super easy because the tolerances between the two are very loose. So after you got those two together, you're gonna tighten the lower leg nuts. Yeah, it sounds obvious, but pro mechanic tip here, okay? So after you tighten the lower leg nuts, you're gonna leave the socket on there and you're gonna hammer both nuts. And then you're gonna watch how fucking loose the bolts were on the bottom of the lowers. And this will prevent you from losing oil if you put oil in it or losing the nuts. So the lower leg nuts were about a quarter turned loose after I hammered them. Basically this is re-crushing the crush washers on the lower legs. This goes for brake calipers, lower leg fluid, you can read dozens of articles of people's lower legs leaking after a service and basically doing this will prevent that from leaking and thank you very much better press thumbs up because that's a huge hack and by the way you need to keep hammering with the socket on the nuts until they stop moving you're going to put the o-ring back on the rebound shaft and then you're going to put the adjuster on it and spin it while you're pushing it down. It will lock into place and try to pull it back off because you do not want to lose it. Now that was the basic lower leg service for the Duralux. Now we're going to rewind and do the full damper service for the more advanced mechanics out there. Now, I'm not sure if that's Russian or whatever it is, but it's the only damper information on the internet for the RC2 Duralux. And the IFP depth is 6.5 centimeters. So if you're an advanced bike shop mechanic, basically that thing in my hand on the lower right of the screen, set that to 6.5 centimeters and that's all you need to know. But for the home mechanics, let's go. To pull the compression knob off, you just need a set of pliers, grab the low speed side, the upper knob and pull it out. So after the knob is removed from the fork, we can just unscrew the actual cartridge with the same 27 millimeter socket wrench. Now this is the RC2 assembly and I'm basically being an investigator because this fork feels like absolute garbage. There's no audible, you can't hear any air in this damper. I suspect and could be wrong, they just put super thick, cheap oil in this damper. Now if something goes wrong, there is no seal kit. You have to send this thing to Suntour to get it serviced. Not even an O-ring on the market. So technically here guys, home mechanic guys, you need a whole bunch of special tools to clamp onto the RC2 assembly. You would need a 25.5 millimeter shaft clamp and it's a super uncommon size. But let me show you a couple hacks to get around those expensive shaft clamps. Now I'm gonna save you a day of headaches because I basically put this damper all the way down on the bench, put it all the way back together, didn't set the IFP depth correctly and the compression damper would not fully squish into itself. So you need to make sure that IFP depth is 6.5 centimeters or you will hydro lock the damper. So when I say hydro lock, basically the rebound rod in my hand will not extend any further into the damper because there's too much oil in it. So round two on the damper went a lot better. We need a 23 millimeter open end wrench or a closed box wrench like this. We are gonna put that on the upper wrench flats of the cartridge assembly. Once it's locked into place, we're gonna put the top cap 27 millimeter in a vise. Be super careful here and don't over clamp it. Make sure it's on the flat sections. 
Now with holding the entire assembly, you can loosen the top cap this way. So when you pull the top cap, there's a spring and a compression needle inside of it. At this point, there shouldn't be any oil. This is a dry part of the damper. Now the compression needle is out of the fork, we can drain all the oil out of the fork through the hole that the compression needle passes through. Basically pump this puppy until she's as empty as she can be. So we need to pull the IFP out of the cartridge. We're going to use some kind of long pick, don't matter what you use, just got to get this puppy out. And she's a little bit stuck and there it is right there on the table. Now the compression cartridge is basically ready for some new oil at this point. And if you're hella frustrated, there'll be a chapter labeled bleed the RC2 damper. But if you want the whole long story and explanation of the less than ideal compression damping in the RC2 damper, keep watching. Now to access the base valves to change the shim stacks, Basically, we need to unscrew this chrome piece. I was able to do it with a strap wrench around the black section. You may need to buy shaft clamps here, but let's take a look at the base valve of this fork. This is the base valve. It has two paper thin washers on top of it. I'm not advanced enough to change shim stacks, but Here's the entire compression assembly in the RC2 damper. It starts off with the knob and then it goes into a compression needle. I think it's an IFP and then it goes down to a base valve. We got two shims like I just told you and they're paper thin. So you could probably retune those pretty easy. When you turn the high speed compression knob, it basically closes the ports in the base valve and I'm assuming the low speed compression is handled in the needle. Now taking a look at this super basic compression system, it makes sense now. When I wrote it, the compression adjusters were very, very disappointing. The rebound shim stack is right here. And I was unable to do it because you have to have the proper shaft clamps. There's no bypassing it. The rebound range on this fork is too slow. So whatever it takes to get the shims to work faster, I guess, would be the right fix. Now there's several wrench flats on the cartridge. The bottom one's a 17 and the upper one's a 23. You can kind of do some hackery to put this back together without the proper shaft clamps. And now it's time to bleed this guy. With the cartridge fully assembled and the IFP out, you're gonna fill it up with oil. I personally used RockShock 2.5 weight oil. Since it looks like a RockShock Yari inside, I figured it'd be okay. If you want the good oil, it's linked in the description. And basically fill it up and wait. It will just sit there and bubble for like five minutes. Don't pump it till it's fully settled to the bottom. Now pump the rebound rod at least 10 times until there's no bubble and no noise coming out of it. So you're gonna need a dial caliper and that protruding rod right here needs to be 6.5 centimeters long. So right here, you need to make sure the rebound rod is fully extended in the fully down position before we set the IFP depth. So this is the IFP and it may not be called an IFP, but there's a two millimeter bleed hole that goes through it. You need to remove it at this time. So once the bleed screw is removed, we're gonna pop it in the top of the fork and we're gonna push it down 6.5 centimeters and we're gonna use the tool we just set up earlier. So you're gonna to need to use your finger to push the IFP down and make sure you're on the flat lowest section of the IFP until the tool bottoms out. At that point, the IFP depth is set. Make sure the rebound rod is fully extended at this time. So once the IFP depth is set, we're gonna take the compression needle and push that guy through. We need to be super careful here because there's a couple check balls in the upper portion do not lose the little parts. Trust me, I spent like three hours crawling on the ground. So we basically push the compression needle through there. We're gonna recheck the IFP height to make sure nothing moved. And if you remember closely, there's a hole inside the IFP, like a bleeder hole. Once that needle is set, it will go into the base valve and you can turn it and hear it click like you're making an adjustment. 
So this is the most challenging, hardest part of this entire job. You're gonna take your tool and put it in grease. You're gonna get the bleed screw that screws into the IFP. And you gotta go upside down like it's falling out, but the grease will hold it in place. You really need a super long two millimeter Allen key. It was probably one of the hardest things I ever did was to walk the thing in sideways because mine are T-handles. So I linked the correct tool in the description that you have to have unless you want to struggle. There should be a little bit of oil since that bleed hole needs to be overfilling. Drain this out, put the spring in, and the top cap will screw right in. Okay, you need to line this up and it is a little bit challenging. I'm not gonna lie here. So basically you gotta spin the low speed compression knob to line it up in the compression needle. And it took me like 10 minutes to get it perfectly lined up. Fully left was on number one and so on. Now, before you stick it in the bike, make sure the rebound rod goes all the way up. That way you know you set the IFP height because there's the right fluid displacement within the compression assembly. You also need to put it up to your ear to make sure there's no air trapped inside. You'll hear it crunching if you got air. With all your tools out in this massive oily mess, you need to dyno the fork. Basically turn the rebound fast as possible, push it. Slow as possible, push it. I can warn you that the compression adjusters on this, you can barely feel them on the trail and you can barely feel them on the bench. Factory oil, new oil, it's just got some primitive compression damping. Now after I change the damper oil within the Suntour Duralux 38, it rides very, very similar to the Fox 38. So you gotta click this video on the screen on how to set up the 38, use the knowledge from that video and put it into the Suntour and get an amazing fork.